good evening to everyone. I am glad to present to you our work about navigated microsecond pulsing laser for central cerebral coronary retinopathy. Central cerebral coronary retinopathy is a coronary retinal disease producing a serous detachment of the narrow retina in correspondence of areas of leakage from the choroid. The patients are generally men, and this disease is typically associated with a decrease in the patient's quality of life. The pathogenesis remains poorly understood. However, choroidal abnormalities are the principal underlying pathophysiology. It is a relatively common disease. Uh, the peak of onset is at 40, 50 years, with distinguished and acute, persistent, and a chronic form. Actually, the optimal treatment is debated. Uh, our therapeutic options are to eliminate risk factors, laser photocoagulation, photodynamic therapy, and micropulsed laser. Concerning the micropulsed laser, in the last years, this technique demonstrated to be effective and safe in both acute and chronic CSC. The impulses are normally absorbed by the chromophore in the RPE. And the treatment is believed to increase the expression of each shock proteins, which can improve the function and the pumping of efficiency in the RPE. The aim of our study is to evaluate the efficacy, safety, and predictive factors of treatment response to navigated microsecond pulsing laser with Nevelas for central cells coretinopathy. So we analyzed retrospectively Patients with persistent and chronic CSC, all patients underwent a complete ophthalmic examination, including multimodal imaging, and were treated with 5% navigated microsecond pulsing laser with nebulas, plus in confluence spots using overlaid fluorescein angiography and or ICG if we can't so visible leaking points. In alternative, if we can't see leaking points, we planned the treatment on choroidal hyperpermeability uh, thanks to ICG images and or OCT images showing subretinal fluid. Here are the results. We treated the 39 eyes of 36, 36 patients and we uh, analyzed this as the primary outcome, the variation of vasporetic visual acuity, subfavel subretinal fluid, central macular choroidal thickness, and serous PED8. Concerning the secondary um, outcome, we decided to analyze different kinds of uh, variables, uh, and we decided to compare them to the resolution of subretinal fluid at mode 3, in order to um, analyze the predictive values of treatment response. So, the spots were planted on the leaking point only in 30% of cases. On both leaking point and subretinal fluid choroidal hyperpermeability in 46. And on both subretinal fluid and uh, on the subretinal fluid and choroidal hyperpermeability only without leaking points in 17.95 of cases. We used different kind of imaging techniques to plan the treatment. We prefer used the ITG only in 40% of cases and both combination of fluorescein angiography and ICG in 20% of cases. We decided one technique or the other in the basis of the better visualization of a leaking point or a choroidal hyperpermeability. And these are the changes of variables during the follow-up. So we obtained a um, significant increase of vascular visual acuity on both three and six months and reduction of subretinal sub fluid on three and six months, central macular thickness decreased two and subfavel choroidal thickness two, significantly decreased at three and six months. There was no increase in RPA atrophy during the follow-up. Considering the correlations and the predictive factors, all variables were correlated to resolution of subretinal fluid mode 3 in order to identify eventually the predictive values. So we obtained that the presence of a not spot 
on forest and land geography and ICG correspond to the active leaking points correlated with the decrease of subretinal fluid at month three, with a more significant result for ICG. The duration of symptoms did not influence the resolution of subretinal fluid at month three, and considering the site of the treatment, treating leaking points combined to the subretinal fluid, so for other repermeability, was superior to treat the leaking points only. All the other variables did not influence the results. So we showed some cases. This is the first case. This is a woman of 50 years, very stressed, with subfovel detachment persisting since five months. Visual acuity was 2064. Forest and angiography showed the presence of pigment epithelial detachment and leaking point in euxafovel region. ICG confirmed the presence of an active leaking point. The OCT uh, showed the presence of subretinal fluid in retrofovel region with the active leaking point that you can see there. We planned the treatment, we planned the spot on the leaking point. This is the setting that we used after the titration. And this is before and after, three months after the treatment without any atrophy in the site of the treatment, 2020. Month six, 12 months. So no recurrence without atrophy and a very good recuperation in visible acuity. This is the second case is the chronic CSC. The patient was already treated with PDT in the past. Um, the visual equity was 2080 at presentation. This is the, the active leaking points, but on the ICG, we didn't see a very um, precise leaking points. We saw the hyperpermeability of the choroid, but not a leaking point and very visible leaking point. The OCT passing through the leaking point and to the fovea, you saw um, the subretinal fluid in the retrofovel region. So we plan the treatment on the ICG hyperpermeability, including the leaking point. And this is before and this is after the treatment. The visible acuity is 2064 and the patient is very happy. The last case is the chronic CSC, a man with a subretinal fluid persisting for eight months, 2064, it is the visual acuity. The first time we decided to treat the patient with the focal, just a focal laser on the leaking point, but without resolution of the swivel subretinal fluid. So we decided to perform the microsecond pulsing. Uh, not only on the leaking point, but also on the um, subretinal fluid region. And we obtained a complete resolution of subretinal fluid and a discrete recuperation of visual acuity at month three and month six follow up without any atrophy. Current studies so report that navigating microsecond pulsing seems to be effective and safe in the treatment of CSC, improving visual acuity and relating our morphology. Our results are concordant with the literature because several papers already showed the high efficacy of microsecond pulsing in CSC. Uh, the, the Professor Chablani already showed the efficacy and safety of navigated microsecond pulse in, in patients with CSC. The only paper actually that showed the superiority of the PDT is the PLACE trial. Uh, if we analyze the PLACE trial, the super, we have to say that the superiority of PDT is not confirmed by another study. The methodology of the microsecond pulsing used is a little bit different compared to our study because the laser that we used is different, is not navigated, it's 810 nanometers. And the authors applied micropulse spots only on the choroidal icarus. So our technique is a little bit different. Considering predictive factors, our work showed that 
The duration of symptoms did not influence really the resolution of retinal fluid. So to treat always. The active leaking point is very important to obtain a better response to microsecond protein. And considering the site of the treatment, treat both the leaking points and subretinal fluid is more um, efficient um, compared to treat the leaking point only. So do not limit the treatment at the leaking point only. The advantages of the navigated microsecond protein is, of course, the safety, thanks to the planification of the treatment, the precision, thanks to the possibility to overlap fluorescent angiography, ICG, OCT, and also facility, because of we can directly visualize the planet spot that we can't with the other laser. And also the reproducibility thanks to reports at the end of the treatment. Limitations. Yes, this is a retrospective study. The sample size is very small. We have not a control group and we have just six months of follow-up. In conclusion, navigating microsecond pulsing seems to be effective and safe in patients with CSC. The treatments are more safe, precise, and reproducible compared to the other laser technique. And to identify the predictive factors allow a better selection of patients that could benefit from the navigated microsecond pulsing treatment. Further studies are, of course, needed to confirm our data. Thank you.